Hello everybody. So today I'm going to teach you how to make your own ADF beacon. Now this is not going to necessarily teach you how to provide the audio for the ADF beacon, but I can show you how to set up uh, a unit to act as an ADF beacon. This may be so that you can use it to help with terrain navigation or obstacle avoidance. Um, such as marking a path that is the lowest point of terrain uh, surrounded by mountains so that people can find their way to it in IFR conditions, um, or through numerous other methods or means that you would need to mark something with the ADF beacon, such as a FARP or a FOB that you need people to navigate by or navigate past uh, in a helicopter or any aircraft that is not equipped with a TACAN system. So, with that, uh, we are going to first place a unit. Now, from what I've been able to find, it doesn't really matter the unit, but I'm just going to use an unarmed... Um, just going to use an unarmed... an unarmed Humvee for this. So we're going to place it down. And whether or not the ELPRS is on doesn't matter. Um, we just need the unit to be here and alive. So what we're next going to do is we're going to add an action. And we're going to do perform command. And then we're going to say set frequency because we need to tell this a frequency. Now, most ADF beacons operate in the kilohertz band, which is a thousand times less than mil megahertz. So in order to get a kilohertz band that's in the hundreds, we are going to type, uh, so for instance, if we wanted a kilohertz band that was 260 kilohertz, we would have to make this unit 0 0.26 megahertz because of the reduction by a thousand. So if we wanted to do that, that's what we would do. So we would input a value of 0 0.26. I'm going to make this a value of 0 0.23 just to make certain that nothing else is on this frequency. We're going to make it AM. And we're going to give it a power of 10 watts. This is mainly just controlling the range at which this can be detected. Next, once we have told it to set a frequency, we still need it to transmit something on that frequency. Now for this, you'll have to make your own audio file. Um, for me, I have an audio file that I'm just going to use that I used in another mission um, that will play over the radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to transmit message, and then I'm going to tell it the file. And if I want a subtitle to go on with it, I can place that here. And then what I want it to do is I definitely want it to loop because I don't want it to just you know, play this message and then stop. I want it to keep transmitting because without a transmitted message, there's no way for an ADF beacon to follow it. So whatever you're going to do, it's going to have to loop. It's going to have to loop over and over again in order for you to have any kind of ability to navigate onto it. So those are the steps to get it set up. Now I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to load the file and then we can demonstrate this in the Apache. Alright, so now we're in our Apache. So now let's get this set up to receive our ADF. So we're going to go instrument, utility, down in the bottom right, ADF. We're going to turn it on. We're going to set our common missile warning system to nav. Because the common missile warning system uses the same channel as our ADF. We are then going to select the frequency on the middle left here. And then we're going to enter the frequency into our panel over here. So what we typed in was 0 0.23. So it's going to be 230 kilohertz, decimal zero. Enter. New point 20, altimeter 2984. Now the file that I had on hand is an ADIS recording that I made for another mission. Now as you can see, we have an ADF heading towards the beacon. It is kind of modulating back and forth, and that's typical for an ADF beacon. It's going to move a little bit. It's not 100% perfect, but we're going to head in the general direction, which is about 212 degrees. So we're going to pause this. We're going to take a look at the map. And so if we bring up our ruler, we can see that 
if we correct for magnetic deviation, this is probably going to be at around 212 degrees. Greater than 10 miles. Ceiling 9,000 scattered. Temperature 20. Dew point 20. And we can also Home use this to switch and navigate to another airfield. There's another one over here that has an ADF beacon at 270 kilohertz. So we're going to type in 270 decimal zero. 270 decimal zero. Enter. As we can see, we are actually broadcasting an EDF beacon because we just changed to another one, and that's a different EDF beacon. So now we're going to change this to 230 decimal zero again, and we'll see the needle move again. Airspace between Lima Lima and Kilo Lima is closed. All airspace to the northwest of Sochi. So we are definitely following an EDF beacon. Now the nice thing is, is that you can use a default ADF beacon sound like um, how it's programmed into the map or you can have your own custom voice transition or you can even imitate a radio station. Uh, you can sometimes use the ADF to tune into radio stations or uh, other frequencies. So long as they're transmitting, you can use the ADF to get a signal direction and it'll give you a rough approximation of the heading towards that origin of the radio signal. And of course this is helpful for when exactly you want to um, help with navigation uh, during bad weather or in case you want to help uh, provide navigation to aircraft that either don't have a sophisticated navigation waypoint system like uh, earlier Apaches or earlier aircraft such as the Mirage F-1 or the F-5. And there are some aircraft, like the Apache, that don't have a TACAN system, they have an ADF system instead. And so, having the, the ability to be able to place an ADF system in, in combination with their accurate navigation systems helps in them being able to more finely narrow down stuff that isn't placed on the map as big as an airfield. Anywho, I hope this helps you, and I'll see you in the next video.